the whole video is black and white. I love black and white videos. I'm back with another video, and in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to Tony Turner again. I'm gonna try to get through this video without talking. I know I talk a lot, but that's the point of reacting. But anyways, it's called Does No, that's the wrong video. Hype Williams silenced after Aaliyah's accident one day ago. So this is the video that he was talking about he was gonna do when he did the Does Fatima know more about Aaliyah's death, and I was like, I can't wait for him to do a Hype Williams video because I think that he played a big role in Aaliyah's death. I I have no proof, but I believe so, personally. But anyways, without further more to say, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Become part of the Crazy Conspiracy team and turn on your bell post notifications so that you'll be notified every time I drop a video. Let's get into this video. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about Hype Williams and his silence after Ali's accident. Now, Hype Williams was a popular sought after music video director of major R&B and hip hop artists of the 90s and the 2000s. And it's worth noting that over 10 of these music videos were for R. Kelly, which is gonna come up again, so stay tuned. He not only shot classic music videos, but classic movies and took many iconic photos, including some of Aaliyah, which he even posted on his Instagram once upon a time. Now, after working with Aaliyah on this photo shoot, he was then chosen as the music video director for her song, Rock the Boat. And it's to be said that most of his decisions are the reason Aaliyah ended up in the predicament she did. But let's bring this back to the beginning. When Aaliyah first appeared on 106 and Park in New York City, the day before she started filming Rock the Boat in Miami. Now, New York City is known for many things, but it's not known for its beaches. So okay, production first started in Miami on a soundstage, the green screen, which I mentioned you want to know something? As you can clearly see, Hype Williams did, I think, direct her music video, Rock the Boat. And just looking at the features in that music video, you mean to tell me they couldn't put some fancy green screen beach behind her in New York? They literally needed a actual beach to film this music video. They could have green screened any beach they wanted to. I mean, just look at the waves that she was dancing in front of. In my last video, you could tell Aaliyah and her team and her dancers and Fatima and everybody was having fun. It was a nice shoot. It was flowing effortlessly. Now, as a side note, I don't know if it was only me, because I saw other people say this, but during these scenes, behind the scenes, right, then it seemed like Hype Williams had this attitude of he was just over it, he wanted to get it over with, get his money, and be over the shoot. That's the type of energy he was giving off, like he was just ready for the shoot to be over with, but I digress. So okay, we get to the point where the green screen scenes are done. Now what most people don't know is that Jamaica was going to be a destination choice for the video, but after bad weather, Bahamas was the next choice. So then it really brings up that question of why the Bahamas? and why not Miami, which was known for beaches. This led me to Google the question, how many beaches are in Miami? To which the article- Listen, if we being serious and open, it wasn't necessarily about the beaches. This was a well thought out plan. Someone was smart enough to do this outside of the US. And I know I always bring this up, but- Who came up saying 16 great beaches of Miami it's not about the beaches though. That's what I meant to say. I totally forgot that quick, but it wasn't about the beaches. It was about doing this killing, this murder, clean and simple, where it would be hard to start an investigation, you know? The Bahamas, it looks very small. No one probably cares. The US is huge. From north to south, on the beaches of Miami, the Atlantic Ocean merges with the Caribbean Sea the sand turns soft and white and the waters lap the shore in shades of a light blue to nearly clear aqua. The area offers more than a dozen beaches all with their own vibe, which would have been a perfect setting for Aaliyah in her beach scenes, which then led to another article titled The Top 10 Secluded Beaches in Miami, which would have been perfect for Aaliyah to have a secluded beach area to film this video. And I'm pretty sure- 
this point, Aaliyah was probably stressed and wanted to get this stuff out the way so that she could just get a break from work. I wish she would have put her foot down and be like, no, this is enough. We can do it right here with a green screen. I'm not going all the way to the Bahamas. But given the fact that she was probably exhausted and tired, which that's what it seemed in her last days, she didn't question why they wanted her to go all the way to the Bahamas and why they couldn't use one of the beaches in Miami. Sure. If they went to a certain beach area in Miami and said, oh, they had got the permit, Aliyah's gonna film this video here, they would've closed it down, no problem. For some reason, Hype wanted to take the video out of the States all the way to the Bahamas, which why. required all of this extra travel and expenses and fees. And just thinking about it from a director point of view, right? Go big or go home. The only reason he probably went big is because he knew this would be the glory video, her last video. Right? Wouldn't it have been cost effective, less cost, less production, less hassle to just keep the video in Miami instead of taking an extra trip, extra flight, extra money, dancers, the crew, everybody all the way to the Bahamas and back? Hmm. Hmm. Let's also get into how the underwater scene that made it seem like Aaliyah was swimming in the ocean was filmed in the University of Miami Olympic sized swimming pool for the divers, which was all Hype's idea as he had confirmed. And in watching, you could obviously see that Aaliyah. I'm gonna do a video of all the ways I feel like they were gonna try to kill Aaliyah because I feel like the plane idea was not their first choice. I think that one of them is water. They had her in so much water and it's a pattern when it comes to water with her. I don't think the airplane one was the only one was anxious and nervous as using a breathing regulator did not work on her first few attempts. And as a side note, you can see, they did the green screen in Miami. He had her go to the University of Miami to do the underwater. One more thing, answer me this. Aaliyah made it a point to say that she did not like any water other than swimming pool water. Scenes, but for some reason, you couldn't go to the beaches in Miami? Hmm. Now you're catching on to this, right? He couldn't take her to the beaches in Miami to do the video. They had to go all the way to the Bahamas to do the video, which required all this extra travel and money. Hmm. Going back to Aliyah being nervous to use the breathing regulator underwater, luckily she had her natural swimming ability and she handled it like a professional holding her breath under the deep water. This is another thing that gets overlooked a lot, but this is another dangerous situation Hype had put Aliyah in for the aesthetic of this music video. Kevin Taylor, who shot the behind the scenes footage of Rock the Boat for the BET special, even said this about the underwater shots. Quote, I always struggle with those scenes in the video because those are the scenes where I know what it looks like to see her scared. Because the first couple of times during that take of that, she had to take deep breaths and go really deep down. We didn't know at the time that those very shots that she seemed so fearful in are the places where she seems to exude the greatest peace that looks the most angelic, that looks the sweetest. These scenes underwater were some of the most beautiful. No one wants to even come close to feeling how it would feel to drown, to be that deep underwater with all that pressure. And like I said before, she already said she was scared of water. You could tell she was scared when she was trying to do the breathing thing. She was like, she just could not do it. And it's hard for me to even watch that because just to know she had to go underwater that deep and hold her breath just for some scenes, they put her through H-E-L-L in the end of her life. Beautiful and memorable scenes from the video, but looking at what Aaliyah had to go through and hearing her describe it, how she was scared and anxious that she had to hold her breath so deep underwater, just knowing what she had to go through just to get that shot. Being a professional, she had to get that shot. Hype Williams, just told her, oh, go, we gotta go deep in this water. You can swim, right? All right, go deep down in this water and do some beautiful mermaid movements. And this is like, Aliyah being a professional, she dealt with it, she got the scene done. But that was a dangerous situation to put her in. It really was. Now we get into Hype's production company, Instinct, which he was the head of. In which it should be noted that after her death, her parents, Diane and Michael, brought a wrongful death lawsuit against Instinct, his production company, and several other defendants in State Superior Court in Los Angeles. The Hartons reached an undisclosed settlement in that October. So the I did not know that. That really tells a lot. That really helps a lot. A lawsuit against Hype Williams production or whatever it is. 
So to break it down, because of this settlement, whatever money Ali's parents got from it, all of the charges and all of the blame from Instinct was taken away. But Barry Hankerson and Blackground filed their own lawsuit against Hype and Instinct only five days later. And in these court documents, Blackground contended that it was and in these court documents, Blackron contended that it was not suing Instinct for the wrongful death of Aliyah, but rather suing Instinct for his negligence, which Blackron alleged resulted in severe harm and loss. The loss being Aliyah and the potential gain, the monetary gain she could have made for the record company, as Aliyah was actually Blackron's primary asset. It was also stated that the damage Black Brown suffered from the result of the negligence and Aliyah's death had been substantial, totaling in the millions of dollars. And to break it even more down, all of these millions of dollars is the potential money Aliyah could have made for Black Brown, which was the label Barry Hankerson owned, which was the label she was on. And as a response, this all is confusing me, but I still don't change my mind about Barry Hankerson. He also filed a lawsuit I don't know, like, it's confusing, like, <sighs> I feel like they're doing this on purpose to try to confuse us. Instinct, Hype's production company fired back saying that no relationship ever existed between Instinct and Blackground as to oppose upon Instinct a duty of care to provide Aliyah with safe transportation. Which in so many words, is basically saying how even though this was all Hype's idea to move the video to the Bahamas, which required all this extra money and travel to the Bahamas and back from the Bahamas, that they felt like it wasn't their responsibility to make sure that she at least got safe transportation as this did require travel by plane. They didn't feel like it was their responsibility. Hmm. Something else worth mentioning is how neither Cowart or Williams, Cowart being another co-owner of the Instinct Production Company, Williams being Hype Williams, neither one of them served with process or appeared in this action. And while Instinct has moved to dismiss Blackground's complaint in its entirety, neither Cowart nor Williams have joined in this motion. Basically meaning Hype Williams didn't even care enough to show up to these court proceedings. And if he did, he would have showed up but he didn't, as stated in the documents, Guilty. which adds on to his silence after Ali's accident. And another thing about his silence is that the New York Times article where it was stated- There's a lot of dirt on Hype Williams than there is Barry Hankerson. Like, Hype Williams, he rubs me the wrong way. Like, he was there in Left Eye's last days. Like, I'm lost. Like, this is all very shocking. He digged up some crazy information. Like, where did he even find this at? Because, Wow, there's a lot missing. If you put all of this that he just found out on the table, you would probably come close to figuring out what really happened to her. That they, they reached out to Hype Williams and his production company for further commentary, they got no response. Hmm. Also, if read further in the court proceedings and documents, it was claimed how Hype Williams production company Instinct never followed certain protocols they were supposed to, like allowing the airport to weigh their luggage. So with all of this, one can infer that Hype didn't give second thought to Aliyah leaving early or the flight arrangements afterwards. Now we know for a fact that Aliyah did leave early because all of the footage for the Bahamas was already done and filmed. Hype claimed that they stayed behind, they had to get extra film, extra shoots, extra footage, but what footage? Like I said in my previous video, all of her scenes in the Bahamas was done. She was the star. All the scenes was filmed. What more footage did you have to get? And as we all know, last August, Damon Dash came out revealing how Lenny Kravitz, of all people, Lenny Kravitz, he got wind of something and he tried to send his private jet out there, which was of substantial size to Aaliyah and her team. But in some way, for some reason, Hype Williams took it instead. This is getting good. In this interview with ET, Damon Dash said he had heard Lenny Kravitz had offered her a jet and that Hype had took the jet. He also said, you can ask hype about that to which i don't never understand that part like why didn't this information come out when it happened or a little after it happened why didn't lenny kravitz say something oh i sent her a plane but whatever his name is took it this is crucial information Cause we had dressed up
that's drowning in our lives I know we broke it up You know the feelings deep inside So why? Uh, you, what we've been through 